Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here. I wanted to do another example where we have a simultaneous equilibrium, this time with a KSP and a KF. So we have a GCL, and we're asked to calculate the molar solubility in pure water, that's our KSP, and then in 0.25 molar KCN. And that's our simultaneous equilibrium because we can also form this complex ion, AgCN2 minus. So let's begin with the straight AgCl in water. We've got AgCl. I'm just going to write out the equation for the KSP. Our solid salt forming aqueous ion. So we know KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th. Now, um, initially, we've got none of those. We're going to gain some as it dissolves. And in equilibrium, we'll have a certain amount of each one. If we write our expression for KSP, it's the concentration of silver ions times the concentration of chloride ions. So we end up with 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th, which is our KSP, equals x squared. And x is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's our molar solubility of AgCl in pure water. Okay, now the second part of the question, it asks us to calculate what's the solubility in 0.25 molar KCN, potassium cyanide. So we're going to actually have to figure out what the overall reaction is. So in this case, we have our KSP reaction, AgCl. Oops. AgCl makes Ag plus plus Cl minus. And then we also have the formation reaction where the silver ions can react with cyanide ions and form the complex ion AgCN2 minus. So we know the KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 and the KF is 1.0 times 10 to the 20th. I'm pretty sure that's right. 10 to the 21st, sorry. 10 to the 21st. And if we add these reactions together, the silver ions are going to cancel out. We'll end up with AgCl solid plus two cyanide ions. makes AgCN2 minus and Cl minus. And our K is, since we're adding these together, is just going to be these two numbers multiplied together. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th times 1 times 10 to the 21st. And my overall K is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 11th. That's still a pretty big K. So we're going to need to treat this like we would any large K, where we convert everything into products stoichiometrically and then sort of back react with our equilibrium so that we can find out what the value of our X is, our solubility. So they said that we've got 0.25 molar. So I'm going to use this as my reaction. I'm starting with 0.25 molar. Um, Cn minus, and I'm starting with, we'll have none of these, I suppose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, react to this stoichiometrically to make the products. And we're just going to assume, they didn't tell us how much AgCl we have, so we're going to assume that we have enough, whatever that is. They didn't give us a number for that. So I'm going to do minus 2 times 0.125, half of 0.25. All of this is going to react, in other words. But on the other side, we're going to get 0.125. Here we'll have 0. 
here we have 0.125 and 0.125. Now this is like our initial, fake initial conditions. So now, because we've converted everything into products, we're gonna have some back reaction where we're going to form some of the reactants. So I end up with a situation where I've got my K, 1.8 times 10 to the 11th for the overall reaction. And if I write my expression, 1.8 times 10 to the 11th, it's gonna equal my concentration of AgCN2 minus times my concentration of Cl minus divided by my concentration of cyanide squared. So if I substitute everything in, I'm going to get 0.125 minus x squared on the top, and on the bottom, 2x squared. And that's kind of convenient because actually now, um, because they're both squared, I can take the square root of both sides and simplify this expression. So the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the 11th is 4.24 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 to the 5th. And so I'm going to just do the square root of this side and the square root of this side. That's going to be 0.125 minus x over 2x. Now, is it possible that I could have neglect x at this point? Probably, but I don't really have to because I've got the information here that I need to solve this. I just have x's. I don't have any even x squared. So um, I'm going to end up with 8.48 times 10 to the fifth times x equals 0.125 minus x. I'm going to move our x's over to the same side. So I'm going to add x to both sides. I don't think that makes a difference. <laughs> We still have the same thing, 8.48 times 10 to the fifth. X over here equals 0.125. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 8.48 times 10 to the fifth. And I end up with X equals 1.47 times 10 to the minus seventh which is indeed very small. So now the question is asked me, what's the solubility of this stuff? So I come back and look at my equation, the only one in the products that's related to my AGCL, right, that we can trust here is gonna be the Cl minus. It's kind of clearer and easier to just look at the chloride since it's not you know, contaminated, I guess, or, or uh, mixed up together with that cyanide. So the chloride concentration at equilibrium, 0.125 minus x, is actually going to be our molar solubility. And in this case, it's 0.125 minus 1.47 times 10 to the minus 7, which is, oops, which is just 0.125. So that is our molar solubility. So that is our molar solubility in the 0.25 molar cyanide solution. Significantly higher than our molar solubility that we calculated in pure water because of the formation of the complex ion.